Hello guys, a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back in another video tutorial for microbiology with Shagnik. So today we will going to talk about a new segment of cell biology that we have not discussed earlier. So that is the targeting of the protein in the ER membrane. Okay, a part of co-translational translocation of protein. So let's get started with the video. So there are various type of protein present in ER, present in your Golgi apparatus and as well as in lysozyme and plasma membrane that are actually synthesized in the RER and after they are synthesized they will be inserted in the ER membrane just like proteins mentioned here. Although they are integral proteins present in the ER they are a type of those type of proteins and they are the main topic of our today's video. So after once they are inserted in the ER membrane they will be transported to the Golgi apparatus and then from the Golgi it will be transferred to the plasma membrane or the lysozyme. Okay, so that is how the targeting of the proteins in the ER membrane is done and from that ER membrane to their preferred destinations, right? So now here in today's video we will going to talk about the four type of integral protein present in the lipid bilayer of the ER. They are type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4 protein. Along with that, we will going to talk about one extra type of protein that is lipid anchor protein or GPI link protein in this video. So without any further delay, let's get started with this video. So first about the type 1 protein. So as I have told you, they all are transmembrane proteins or integral proteins. So what is the meaning of this transmembrane or integral protein? So transmembrane or integral proteins are protein that have the ability to span the lipid bilayer, right? they may span the lipid bilayer single times or multiple times okay so here type 1 type 2 and type 3 protein will going to span the lipid bilayer one time okay only the type 4 will going to span the lipid bilayer more than one time okay so that is the case so let's talk about specially in type 1 first okay so as you can see in this picture the type 1 protein consists is a single time spanning transmembrane protein right so it's have a one n terminus as well as a c terminus and it is right right because here we are talking about protein and they will have n terminus as well as c terminus right so the n terminal in will be at the ER lumen in case of type 1 and c terminal in will be at the cytosol okay now the main important thing is as you can see in this picture that the type 1 transmembrane protein have two type of signal sequence okay one is n terminal start transfer signal sequence and a internal stop transfer signal sequence and they are very very important for targeting of type 1 protein in the ER membrane let's see how so this picture is specifically for the type 1 protein okay and remember this type of transferring are known as co-translational translocation why because as you can see translation is going on but mem membrane proteins are transferring right simultaneously so that is why we are calling it co-translational translocation so now what is the idea the idea is this n terminal start transfer signal sequence will going to play a very very important role as its name suggests and remember another one thing that this n terminal start transfer signal sequence is cleavable but the internal stop transfer signal sequence is non cleavable okay so this n terminal cleavable start transfer signal sequence will going to start the translocation okay and as a result when the protein is still synthesizing with the help of ribosome the protein will start translocating right towards the eval domain okay now once this start transfer signal sequence will going to enter the eval domain it will be cleaved okay as you can see in this picture it it is become cleaved right and now the translocation will still going on until the stop transfer signal sequence comes here okay once this stop transfer signal sequence comes here that means in this place 
you will it will going to stop the transfer okay but as you can see the ribosome is still synthesizing that particular protein okay and as a result once the c terminus will be synthesized it will be loops out at the cytosolic site okay and stop transfer signal sequence will be at the lipid bilayer okay and after the complete synthesizing of the type 1 transmembrane protein there will be a lateral movement of the type 1 transmembrane protein and that's how they will be embedded in the er membrane so that is the overall idea of our type 1 transmembrane protein okay and this type 1 transmembrane protein example if you consider the example of the type 1 protein so we should talk about LDL receptor that is low density lipoprotein receptor as well as insulin receptors growth hormone receptors they are the example of type 1 transmembrane protein right because in the cell membrane video we have already talked about that this transmembrane proteins usually act as a receptors right so mainly receptors are the example of those kind of transmembrane protein okay so that is the type of type 1 transmembrane protein present in the ER now let's talk about type 2 okay guys so now let's talk about the type 2 transmembrane protein so there is a significant difference between type 1 and type 2 as you can see that the n terminus of the type 1 is at the er lumen site but the c terminus of the type 2 is at the er lumen site right that means the type 2 is the opposite of the type 1 in terms of orientation of n terminus and c terminus right but that is not all there is also a very very important difference that is in type 2 there is only one signal sequence is present unlike type 1 where there is two signal sequence present right in type 2 there are the signal sequence which is present solely act both as a start transfer signal sequence as well as internal stop transfer signal sequence okay and they are non cleavable because remember during the type 1 the n terminal start transfer signal sequence was cleavable but here there is only one sequence and which is non cleavable okay and another important thing as you can see in this picture in the type 2 the stop transfer signal sequence which is also the start transfer signal sequence is here now towards the end terminus of the stop transfer signal sequence there will be high density of positively charged amino acid in type 2 okay and remember where the high density of positively charged amino acid present meaning in which direction the positively charged amino acid present that particular direction will be at the cytosolic site okay and that is what we call positive inside rule okay so as you can see that here the positively charged amino acids are in the n terminus of the stop transfer signal sequence and that's why you can see that n terminus is in the cytosol okay so that is all about the type 2 signal sequence and if we consider the example transferrin receptor as well as the golgi galactosyl transferase are the example of type 2 right so in type 1 we have seen ldl receptors insulin receptors as well as growth hormone receptors and here we have seen transferrin receptors and golgi galactosyl transferase receptor okay so now let's talk about type 3 so in type 3 you can see the orientation is just like type 1 right that is the n terminus will be at the er lumen site and c terminus will be at the cytosolic site right now here like type 2 there will be only one signal sequence as you can see right that is both start transfer signal sequence as well as stop transfer signal sequence and as you can see that the positive charge density is at the c terminus of the stop transfer signal sequence you can see that c terminus is at the cytosolic site and n terminus is will be at the er lumen site okay that is what you have to remember that if the positively charged density is on the n terminus of the cytosolic n terminus of the stop transfer sequence then you can see that n terminus will be at the cytosolic site right similarly if the stop transfer signal sequence in type 3 you can see that the c terminal side of the stop transfer signal sequence having high density of 
positively charged amino acid and that's why C terminus will be at the cytosolic side, right? So that is very, very easy to remember, right? Just by remembering this picture, right? So now the example of type 3 transmembrane proteins include cytochrome P450, okay? So that is the type 3. Now let's talk about the type 4. Type 4, as you can see, it is spanning the membrane multiple times. Here, although in this picture, they have only mentioned that this transmembrane protein spanning the membrane three times, but it may be more than three times or less than three times. But obviously, it will be more than one times, right? That's why we are calling it multi-spanning transmembrane protein. And I think we know about this type of proteins from earlier, right? For example, G protein couple receptor, they are transmembrane proteins who are spanning the membrane seven times, right? Along with that, I want to include some more examples. For example, GLUT1 receptors, then CFTR. This CFTR thing we have talked about during the cholera toxin discussion, right? This is the channel that releases chlorine, right? So this type of receptors are the example of type 4 transmembrane protein. Now, there are very, very important things that we should learn. First of all, in the diagram, you can see that there is more than one stop transfer signal sequence present, right? As well as start transfer signal sequence present. And both are at the internal side. There is no signal sequence present at the termini, right? And now, there will be two type of type 4 proteins. Remember, if the type 4 protein have have spanning the membrane or have spanned the membrane even number of times, then the N terminus and C terminus will be at the same direction or at the same orientation. Okay, that means the N terminal and C terminal will may be both at the ER lumen side or at the cytosolic side. But as you can see in this picture, the transmembrane protein spanning the membrane odd number of times that is 3. That is why N terminal and C terminal are at the opposite direction, right? So that is the type 4 protein. Now, one extra type of protein, before going to talk about that type of protein, let's get a quick revise. That is in type 1 protein, the N terminus will be at the ER lumen side and C terminal will be at the cytosolic side. N terminal side will have a start transfer signal sequence and a internal stop transfer signal sequence. N terminal start transfer signal sequence is cleavable, right? And now, in case of type 2, as you can see, there will be only one signal sequence that is both start transfer signal sequence as well as stop transfer signal sequence, and it is non cleavable. Remember, if the positively charged amino acid density will be at the N terminus of the stop transfer signal sequence, the N termini will be at the cytosolic side. Right? And that is what we can observe in case of type 2. But opposite will be in case of type 3, where the positive charge density will be at the C terminus of the stop transfer signal sequence. Right? And in type 4, as we can see, that if it spans the membrane odd number of times, the N terminus and C terminus will be opposite direction. Or if it is spanning the membrane even number of times, the N terminus and C terminus will be at the same direction. Okay, so that's the idea. Now let's move on. The another type of protein that we will going to discuss that is the GPI linked protein. Okay, so GPI linked or lipid linked proteins are also known as membrane anchor protein. Okay, they will be synthesized and inserted in the ER membrane as you can see, right? But here, one thing you can see that here the transfer is quite different from what we have seen in the previous type of proteins that we have discussed. But it quite similar like type 1, right? Because here as you can see, there is a start transfer signal sequence at the end terminus and a stop transfer at the internal, right? Once end terminus enters the lumen of the ear, it will be clipped. Okay. Now, the idea is once it will be inserted in the ear membrane, there is a protein that will came, not a protein, it is a enzyme named trans 
aminidase. Okay, this trans aminidase enzyme will do what? It will going to so before going to talk about the trans aminidase, we should mention another thing that first once the GPI linked proteins will be synthesized, it will be inserted in the ER membrane, right? That is how we have discussed in our type 1 protein, right? And after inserting, it will be transferred to this GPI anchor. GPI means glycosyl phosphatidyl in acetal, right? Which is an example of lipid, right? So after it will come in GPI anchor, the C terminus of the membrane protein will be clipped by the enzyme transaminidase. As you can see, the C terminus of the membrane protein is clipped. And as a result, the new C terminus that will be generated will form a amide bond with the N terminus of the GPI anchor. Okay, now this GPI anchor will direct the protein to cell membranes. Okay, so that is the idea of GPL linked proteins or lipid linked proteins. Okay, as it is linked with a lipid. Okay, so now if we try to revise it, so what is the idea? So idea is this type of protein are synthesized in the ER and after synthesizing it will be inserted in the ER membrane, right? By cleaving the end terminal star transfer signal sequence, right? And now what will happen? It will transfer to the GPI anchor, okay? That is glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol anchor, okay? So now after that a transaminidase or not it is after that it will occur simultaneously that is a transaminidase enzyme will come and this transaminidase enzyme will going to clip the C terminus of the membrane protein okay and as a result a new C terminus will be generated this C terminus that is the new C terminus will going to form a amide bond with the amino group of the GPI anchor okay and that's how GPI anchor protein will form and this GPI anchor now will direct the protein to cell membranes. Okay, so that is the idea. So I hope this video will be helpful for you for understanding the concepts of type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4 transmembrane protein in the ER as well as the lipid link membrane proteins or GPI link proteins. So thank you for listening to this class.